Um, and it was really kind of cool how this all came together because we got together the off people tweet and we're just like, good explanation, but it just like all came together so great, so we're all super excited. Um, I'm going to be talking about like purpose and God's plan for our lives, um, and so I'm going to start off with a verse that almost everybody knows, Jeremiah 29 11. If you don't have a Bible, you want to put there. We're going to put it on the screen. Um, what? What? Why did you tell me that? Okay, and can I have like someone read that for me? I'm not going to Where is it? Does anybody want to read it? <laughs> this is Jeremiah 29 11. I got it. For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Okay. Um, I'm going to kind of share my testimony a little bit with you guys tonight. Um, this is something that I've really struggled with. Um, I grew up in church, and so I knew that God had a plan for me. I knew. Like, this is what I grew up hearing. He's got a plan, he's got a perfect plan, this is all going to work out. Um, but it's something that I had really struggled with because I kind of like to know what's going on. And so I was just like, okay, God, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for you to kind of send that lightning bolt down and tell me what your plan is. Um, and I just kind of used that as an excuse for a long time to kind of just sit still in my relationship with God. Because um, I was like, you know, we're not going to move forward. I'd like to know where I'm going before I start going forward. Um, and I'm not saying like the lightning bolt moment can't happen, but I was sitting there just waiting and <coughs> using that as an excuse for so long not to like move forward in my walk with him. Um, and so God finally like showed me that I'm not going to know what his will is for my life if I don't spend time with him. Um, I have to grow like stronger in my relationship with him before he starts revealing things to me. Like... I don't know what happy you guys like to do because I don't know a lot of you. Um, if you don't know the stranger across the room, what they like to do for fun, or the kid in your math class, what they plan on doing with the rest of their life. But you have to build that relationship to understand like where they come from and what, where they're going with their life. Um, sorry, guys. Um, and I can't just like wait around like I did, like just waiting for the big door to open and God to say, here's where you go with the flashing lights and the neon signs and all that. Um, and so can you all look at Proverbs 3, 5 through 6? And can somebody read that one too? Somebody want to read that one too? 
by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the performing of miracles, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another different kinds of languages, to another interpretation of languages. But one and the same spirit is active in all of these, distributing to each person as he wills. For as the body is one and has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also is Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. So the body is not one part, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, in spite of this, it still belongs to the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, in spite of this, it still belongs to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed each one of the parts in the body just as he wanted. And if they were all the same part, where would the body be? Now there are many parts, yet one body. So the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. 
or again, the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. But even more, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are necessary. And those parts of the body that we think to be less honorable, we clothe these in greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have better presentation. But our presentable parts have no need of clothing. Instead, God has put the body together, giving great honor to the less honorable so that there would be no division in the body, but that the members would have the same concern for each other. Okay. That was a lot. We're going to go through it. Um, my first point for you tonight is God has specially created every one of us, and our lives have been given a purpose by Him. Um, Psalm 139, 14 says, I will praise you because I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know this very well. If you keep going, verse 16 says, You saw me when I was formless. All my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began. God has a purpose, just like Shelby talked about. He has a purpose for our lives, and he created us for a reason. Uh, the purpose for our lives is to make God known throughout the earth, to share the gospel as we are commanded. Um, Shelby read Mark 16, 15, I believe. And uh, Matthew 28, 19 practically parallels it, saying, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, Acts 1, 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Um, so we have a purpose in our lives. And... Whenever we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit um, comes and helps us to fulfill that purpose that God has given us. Um, verses 4 through 11 go through the different types of gifts we have been given by the Spirit. Um, and if you look at it again, you have to notice in verse 8 and going from there, it says, through the Spirit, by the same Spirit. By the same spirit, um, by the one spirit, it keeps going and it keeps um, just referring back to one, the same. There's only one spirit inside of every single one of us. If you look around and see how many people there are, that's pretty amazing. Um, and by the same spirit, uh, we are all one body because we share Christ. We share that spirit, and that spirit makes us one body. Um, if you go to Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. It says, um, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father who is above all and through all and in all. Um, if you flip back to 1 Corinthians, they go about a page back to 1 Corinthians 10, 17. It says, because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for all of us share that one bread. Now, if you think about the Lord's Supper, and also what Jesus said in John, I believe, is that he is the bread of life. And so if you take that and put Jesus as the bread in the last part of the sentence, this is, or in the whole thing, it says, because there is one Jesus, or God, we who are many are one body, for all of us share that one God. Um, each gift, if you go back to 1 Corinthians 12, each gift is given not according to greatness, but according to purpose, because God created us. He knows us best. And the gifts he grants us at certain times are the gifts that we need to best fulfill how he wants us to share his word. Um, if you look at verse 7, it says, a demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person to produce what is beneficial. Um, beneficial sure a majority of y'all know what that means. It just, it's like... Okay. Um, so God has given us each gift to fulfill his purpose in our lives. Um, 
And with those gifts, we are meant to use those gifts together, though, to be one body unified in Christ. Um, if you look to, it's a long section, it's verses like 12 through 25, but it keeps going and saying, if the eye wanted to be a foot, where would the seeing be? Like, if the whole body was an eye, where would the hearing be? And if we each wanted to do a specific thing, and we didn't look to how God wants to use us um, by coming together, then we'll each go our separate ways. It's like if you're thinking about your own body. If you're, one leg wanted to go one direction, the other leg wanted to go the other direction, but your feet wanted to stay in place, you'd end up nowhere. Um, and so, if you think about it, verses 14 through 20 are pretty straightforward. It's God has provided each gift to be used together. Um, and so, only when we are focused on Christ and his purpose to reach the gospel to the people of the world, are we going to be fully in unified and grown as people are reached with and accepting the message of salvation. If you go back to Ephesians 4, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of taking you everywhere. Um, 416. It says, um, from him the whole body, fitted in it together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. So whenever we're all working together, and not focused on what other people are doing and what other people are thinking, then we'll be working exactly how God has meant us to be working. And we'll be fulfilling his purpose of reaching the people because we'll be working together. We'll be producing what is beneficial because we're each using our own gifts. So that's what I have for you. We're going to pray now. Dear God, um, thank you so much for letting us be able to come and hear this. And thank you for teaching all of us um, what you prepared for this night, God. And as we continue to go a little bit deeper and a little bit further into your word, um, please just continue to help us learn and continue to teach us and keep our minds open about what you want for us today. Okay. So, um, like, set up here. All right. So, so far tonight, we have talked about what missions looks like with a purpose and um, what unity looks like in missions. Um, and so, I'm going to look at like, sorry, I'm going to look at like what worship looks like with missions, what it means to live like a worshipful life, and um, so um, to start off. Like, worship is more than um, just the band standing up here playing a few songs and us raising our hands. It's a lifestyle. Like, it's a sacrificial lifestyle. Um, and sacrifice is never easy. Like, I know I can think of at least one thing um, that I'm going through that I'm just having a hard time just completely releasing to God because that's hard. It's hard to give yourself up to that to something that you can't see. And, you know, like, yes, you can hear him, but it's hard. Um, and so, on that note, um, if y'all would turn with me to Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. Alright, it says... In the year that um, King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two covered, he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, 
and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am, send me. So this is the story of Isaiah's calling um, to be a prophet. And um, it talks about how this one moment inspired his entire life to be given to the Lord and to be completely sacrificed for what God had for him. Um, starting in verses 1 through verse 3, we get a picture of the throne room and what it looks like to be there. And, um, I mean, just a small glimpse. But it talks about how the seraphim call to one another and just say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. It makes me think of, um, y'all don't have to turn there, but in Revelation chapter 4, when it describes just a scene of worship, and it is just um, all the different people that are there just calling out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Like, that gets me excited. Um, like, I just, I can't even imagine, like, just want, not wanting to say anything else, but holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Um, and, like, just that glimpse of worship that was shown there was enough for Isaiah to fall on his face and say, Woe is me, for I am lost. And that's the first step that it takes for everyone, is for God to reveal himself and for your heart to be open and for you to go, Woe is me. Like, I'm lost. Like, God, I can't do anything without you. Like, I'm a dirty, nasty sinner. Um, and this is, like, um, in my eyes, like, this is the first moment of, like, true surrendered worship, of just letting yourself go and just saying, God, it's all about you. I can't do anything else. Like, I can't pull myself out of what I'm in. I need you. And, um, like, nowadays, like, for us, like, it doesn't, it obviously doesn't look the same thing as it did for him. Like, for us, it it ends in us, like, giving our life to Christ and saying, like, God, that I, I recognize that you died on the cross for me. You sent your son. I believe in that. And, like, I confess that. I want to give my life to that. Um, and so, once this moment occurs, like, your heart transforms. Like, you, like, it's just a complete, like, restart. Like, just a new start, like, from the beginning. Kind of like when you move from, like, one place to another and you don't know anyone else. Like, you get just a fresh light. God doesn't care what happened yesterday. All he cares about is the fact that you you love him and you care about him. And with that heart transformation, comes with it comes with a change of desires and what you want to do with your life. And um, that change of desires and that transformation led to Isaiah saying, Here I am, send me. Um, that verse has always like inspired something in me. Like just for like Isaiah to respond to God saying, Who whom shall I send? And Isaiah's like, I'm here, I want to do it, like let me in. Like that, like, I want to have that sort of, like, surrender just to, like, not even care, like, what God's going to do with me. Like, God doesn't explain anything there. He just says, I need someone. And I say, like, I want to do it. Like, that that inspires me. And so, um, like, as we want to do the things of God and as we say, here I am, send me, our heart's desires change. And we stop wanting to gratify ourselves and our worldly desires. And we want to look to Christ and the Word and what He wants for our lives instead of what we want for our lives. And, our, and we want, like, we desire more and more for our lives to look like what Jesus looked like in the Bible and the Gospels and what, like, some of the prophets looked like or some of the acts of worship that David, like, had. Like, Psalms is crazy in that. And um, he also places a desire in us to share and proclaim who he is and what he's done in our lives and the transformation that he's done. Um, like, and he wants us to go and share that with others. Like, that, I mean, can you imagine, like, it's like being in a relationship with someone and just wanting to talk, run around and just talk about the person that you're in a relationship with. Well, friends, we're in a relationship with Christ, and that should inspire us to just run around and talk about Him. Like, we should be so completely, utterly abandoned in love for Him that, that we can't shut up about it. Like, that, that's how I see it. And, um, and, like, all of these things that I talk about, like, the transformation and when our heart's desire change, changes, that is when um, our life starts to look like missional, or we live mission-minded, or however you want to call that. There's 50 different things that you can call that. Um, and like that missional lifestyle is a lifestyle that has led telling others about the saving power of Christ. Like plain and simple, like that's what we're called to be. Like Hannah mentioned in Matthew 28:19, like go therefore and make disciples. 
Simple command, go and make. Like, um, so, and like that's exactly what Isaiah does. Maybe not in the same sense as we do it today because things changed and Christ came to save us and we don't have to go through all the crazy different acts that they had to go through. But it's the same principle. He still went and he still told of what God told him to do. Like in the word, like uh, flipping through Isaiah, like all the different things that like Isaiah is called to do. Like, and what he's told, like, that's what we're supposed to do. Of all the different acts that God's done in our lives, that God did in the Bible, like, go and share them. Um, so, um, like, yeah, it looks different, but the message is the same. Like, Jesus is coming back, and we need to be ready ourselves for that coming back, but we should also want others to be ready for us. Um, just kind of a, a cool story, like, the reason why we chose the song, like, Even So Come, like, which talks about, like, being ready and, like, wanting God to, like, come and just rain down on us, like, we should, like, that desire, like, shouldn't just be for us, like, God is going to come back one day, and, like, whether or not, like, I mean, it's a reality that you're on one side of the fence or the other, either you're going to spend your eternity praising God, or you're going to fall on your face, praise Him, and then be forever away from Him, which I don't want my friends to have that lifestyle. I look back on high school, and even just the past two years at, when I was at Kingwood Park, like, I can think of, I could probably think of 10 friends' names off the top of my head that I wish that I could go back to and be like, guys, look at this. I didn't get a chance to share this with you, or I didn't take the opportunity to share this with you, but I need you to know this because I don't want to spend, I don't want you to spend an eternity away from God because that's, that, that's hell. I mean, that's what hell is, is an eternity away from God. And, um... And so the proclamation of this message will lead to sacrifices in our lives. Like, as we begin to tell more and more people about, like, what God is going to do, the more that people are going to outcast us, the more that we're going to lose friends. But that's okay, because that's exactly what happened to Christ. If you'll flip over to Luke 9, 23 and 24. Um, Um, okay, so I'm just going to read it. Um, it says, um, and he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Forever would, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Um, this ver these verses have always like resonated with me, because like God says, like, not just to lay down your life once to him and complete surrender to him, but to do it daily and to do it for his sake. Nothing to do with us. The Bible clearly states it. Like, it's not about us. It's not about what we can do in our lives. It has nothing to do with that. Like, it's all about him. And it's about denying ourselves for him. And in denying ourselves, we live a life that is glorifying to Christ and that is worship to our God and King. So um, from like following Christ's example and giving ourselves up to God, by default, we, like, that's worship to God. Giving up ourselves, losing ourselves in, in Him and in who He is. Um, one of my favorite quotes that I found out that my dad actually says is, worship is an outward expression of inward affection. Just think about that. Worship is an outward expression of inward affection. It makes me think of the song Overflow that David sings. Like, it should all bubble up so much. The affection that we have for Christ should bubble up so much that it just comes out, that it just pours out, and we can't help but express it. Um, but uh, another quote by John Piper says, Missions exist because worship doesn't. Um, we are challenged to go and inspire worship in others through Christ. Um, and, like, I know it sounds big, but all it takes is your life saying, here I am, God's in me. And you don't have to go across the world to do this. You can go to your schools, you can go to your neighbors, um, your cheer squads, on Patriots, on whatever dance team, on your volleyball teams, on your basketball, football, golf, I'm trying to think, like all across campuses, any school, Huffman, um, AHS, KHS, 
um, humble, like all those goals. Like it doesn't take you going to Uganda or Seattle or even going to middle school camp. Like go next door. Do you know that your neighbors? Uh, do you know that your neighbor is saved? Like, that's all it takes. And then just seeing what God does with that. And um, so, in closing, um, a rhetorical question, but what is your response to that? Like, I want you to think about that. Um, and so, one last scripture, um, Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Um, so as I close, um, like if y'all need to talk to anyone about that, like if you just like want to hear more about that, like I know like any of the Abedin people or me or just any of us in this room, like definitely would be willing to talk about this. Um, so um, on that note, I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to sing another song. So, Dear God, Lord, I just thank you um, just for the opportunity to just be able to stand up here and just speak what you would have me to say. Um, God, I pray for these students and these kids in this room and God that... Um, God, that they would just glean something from what you have to say to them. Um, God, I don't know what their walks are, what they're going through, but I know, God, that um, you just you have big plans for them. And God, I pray that you would just cover them and that you would just guide them, God, and just all that they do, that they would just be focused on you. In your name we pray. Amen. So, um, y'all have already figured out today we're talking about missions, okay? Um, being a, Christ follows us, we are, we're all uh, we're all called to mission, whether that be, uh, again, in Uganda, across the world, or even, like, next door, you know. Um, everywhere you look, we, we see people. Um, like, um, being, being the cross followers that we are, we can't, we can't not be, um, like, in a Christ-like mind, where uh, he loves them, we should love them, too. We, we should want to go and, um, and, and just, just share his good name. Um, uh, can we uh, turn to Romans 10, 13, 15? Starting in verse 13, it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one who they have not heard of? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the news. Um, really, really in, uh, in reading this, I, I, I um, really hone in on um, what it says, is how can they not hear without someone preaching to them? I mean, um, we may go through life and we may see people who uh, we don't really agree with what they say, what they do, their, uh, their lifestyle, their life choices, but um, who are we to judge? I mean, uh, if, if we can't go to them and, and say, hey, uh, I, I love this person, his name, his name is Jesus, you know, he walked on this earth. Um, um, we can't really criticize, I mean, we're, we're dirty sinners too, I mean, um, so uh, really, uh, God, he brings in this message, he says that, hey, like, um, how can these people not believe if they haven't been taught to? I mean, so he really, he really hones in and he says that, uh, that uh, you know, this, this is our, our duty. I mean, God being all powerful, he can do this without us, but he gives us the privilege of going out and, and just really teaching in, in, in his name. I mean, um, you may think, oh, but I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just a student. I, I, I'm, I'm not even an adult yet, or, or I'm just becoming an adult. I mean, um, us being in high school, us just now graduating, um, there's no other time than now that we have the most amount of people in our lives, the most amount of people that we can go out, the most amount of people that we can go talk to. Um, and it's just the, the amount of, of, of people that we come into contact in a day. How, how can you not think, hey, what if this person doesn't know? Or 
or how, how can I, I show this even through my life? Um, missions isn't, a, uh, isn't just like, a, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to spread his name. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's not something that we can just turn on and turn off. Um, I, uh, my dad, he, uh, he, um, he has to get his tonsils removed. Um, and I don't know, like I didn't go, but um, at, his, at his like checkup thing that they do like a week before, um, one thing led to another. He's sharing his testimony to the person who's going to be doing the operation to him. I mean, it's a, it's a daily thing. It, it should be on your mind constantly. Um, it's like, I, I can't put it any other way than what Abby said. It's, his missions exist because worship doesn't. I mean, think about that. Worship doesn't exist. So that's why we go in and, 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 and we, we make missions. Um, Yeah, I'm kind of blanking out. I don't like public speaking. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, he calls us to make disciples of all nations. Um, I think a, a common misconception again is that oh, uh, all nations being oh, I have to go to to Uganda. I have to go to Prague. Um, yeah, that 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 is the call. But um, you may not be called to that. You may be called to a different mission. It's being down your street to even even maybe. Um, your cousins that, that are, are just maybe down down in the next town. It's not just having to go somewhere. It's it, it's right at home. Missions again they exist because worship doesn't. And how can you not worship a God who sent His Son down to die for you? And it's just amazing to me, and it baffles me. And being the Christ followers that we are, it should baffle you too. Um, let's go ahead. We'll pray. Dear Lord, we come to you now, Lord, and we just thank you for all the things that you allow us to do, Lord. We thank you that you give us the ability to do it, uh, and in your name, just preach. Lord, I pray that, that as we leave here today, that we'll have a tug on our hearts, Lord. A tug that calls us to just fulfill what you want us to do, Lord. I pray that no matter like the situation that we're in, Lord, that you be the forefront of what we're doing, that you would guide our steps, Lord. I pray that as we go back to school, Lord, that it wouldn't be our popularity on our mind. It wouldn't be our, our what, are, what are we going to do next because of this drama, but it would be, what can we do to better your name? Lord, I pray these things in your name. Amen.